Hey guys, this is Scott. I've seen a lot of discussion recently on cooler gels or so-called ice substitutes. I've waited too long to do this video on cooler gels and the next time somebody tells you about a magic cooler gel, share this video with them. The basic idea is that I'm going to share some helpful information, some basic testing I did. What put me over the edge is seeing this cooler gel or ice extender that is represented as increasing how long your ice lasts by 40 to 50 percent. This seems silly. The only way I can imagine they make this claim is that they're not keeping the mass of contents the same. That's to say, if they add five pounds of frozen gel to 10 pounds of ice, yes, you just extended it by 50 percent. But I'm going to show you why it's better to add five more pounds of regular frozen drinking water to your existing 10 pounds ice. I ordered this ice extender for about 12 bucks from Amazon Prime. So the idea with this stuff is that you mix it with regular water. I have two bottles of regular water with 330 milliliters a piece and fitted with a temperature probe to data log every two and a half minutes. For this testing, it's very important to have the exact same mass in each bottle. I put the prescribed half teaspoon of the ice extender for this amount of water and I mix it up until you can see that it has turned into a gel. So I'll try to share a graph over the video here. Both bottles went into a freezer set to zero degrees Fahrenheit. The data starts recording when they are both at their freezing point. The packaging says 50% colder than other ice substitutes. So I expected that the freezing point would be less than water, but it froze solid at about the same 32 degrees Fahrenheit. After it turns into a solid, you can see the core temperature drop to the freezer setting of 0 degrees Fahrenheit. I left them in the freezer overnight. When the frozen water and gel reach the freezer temperature, you can actually see the compressor of the freezer cycling every hour and a half at about 30% duty cycle, with about a 6 degree peak to trough. It's pretty interesting to see the exact same behavior from the two, because if the frozen gel had more specific heat capacity, you would see slower movement during, during these cycles and a smaller peak to trough. So the next morning I took them both out of the freezer and they were the exact same core temperature of the freezer. I put them both outside next to each other, in the sun, in equal position, kept data logging, and played with the time lapse setting on my camera. In less than half an hour, they both reached their melting point. This is the period that the solid soaks up heat before melting and when you will see the bottle begin to sweat. Each solid has a specific heat capacity to increase temperature to the melting point. When it reaches its melting point, it will equilibrate there for a period of time depending on the latent heat of fusion. This is the bulk of the energy that takes the most time, and during this phase it soaks up the most heat. After the solid has completely melted into a liquid, it will continue to approach ambient temperatures which were about 68 degrees Fahrenheit that day. The amount of heat required to raise this temperature is the specific heat capacity of the liquid. The specific heat capacity to raise the temperature of water is about twice that of ice. And it's also a smaller temperature differential from ambient. That is why the temperature change is not as steep as the rise in temperature of the ice, and why it will curve to flat as the temperature differential approaches zero. This is also why it's best to keep the melted ice in your cooler to keep everything cold even after it is melted. In a Maluna ice chest, you can keep your beers cold for at least a couple more days, even after the ice melts. What I've done with these two bottles is a very basic backyard test to determine if there is any more thermal capacity in this cooler gel than basic drinking water. Take a look at the chart. There's no more thermal capacity. My favorite way to chill a cooler is to freeze a couple two liter bottles with drinking water. Fill the cooler with a payload that is pre-chilled and top it off with cubed ice. The last thing to melt will be the two liter bottles of water and the best part is that you can drink the water when it melts. Duration. It's a function of the thermal properties of your frozen cold source. Remember that water can't be beat. It's also a function of mass. Remember to top off your cooler all the way with ice. And it's also a function of the temperature differential. 
Remember to keep your cooler in the shade or away from blacktops or cooking it under the tonneau cover of your truck. Ice packs that actually do freeze colder than water will freeze your food and they'll decrease duration because they have the same thermal capacity as water but have increased the temperature differential so it's a tougher and it's a shorter fight. The biggest difference you can make to duration is to make sure you have the very best ice chest possible. This is why I designed the full perimeter tensioning system on the Maluna unhinged ice chest which was tested to have more than 20% duration than Yeti. And I've made the white paper available on my website at maluna.com. Thanks again. Have a great day.